All right, so this week we worked on a method of maintaining relationships and proportions uh, that we're going to just call the shapes method for the for the ease of remembering it because it has to do with breaking things down into shapes. Last week we used a grid with vertical and horizontal lines to keep us uh, aware of our proportions and our relationships between one curve and another and our, our horizontal and vertical relationships. This week we looked at using simple shapes, circles, triangles, and rectangles to keep us aware of our relationships and, and proportions that way. And so here's how that kind of works. This is a complicated shape. This horse is not a shape that we learn how to draw or that we learn how to identify when we're in elementary school and uh, preschool, you know, putting blocks into into holes. We, we use circles, triangles, and squares. We're used to seeing what those are supposed to look like. And because of that, because of this complicated shape, it can be really hard to draw. Some people look at this and think, well, that, I could never draw that horse. Well, we could grid it and look at the horizontal and vertical relationships, and that would be useful. It would very much work. Uh, but if we want to go a little bit faster, then one thing we can do is the shapes method, where we take this shape and we break it down into one of these three simpler shapes, circle, triangle, and rectangle. So, for instance, if I look at this horse, and, and I've got tracing paper here. Uh, you guys don't need tracing paper. I'm using this just to uh, illustrate a point a little bit later on in the, in the video here. But you'll just have an, uh, you can just draw this right on whatever image you want. Um, if you don't want to, if you have a photograph that you're drawing from, or if you have another picture that you want to keep it looking exactly the way that it was, well, yeah, you might put some tracing paper down so you don't ruin the picture as you're drawing these shapes. Um, but it's not necessary. So, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to find some large shapes because you want to go largest to smallest. It's really easy to fill in the details once you've got the very general shapes together. So one of the first shapes that I see as I'm looking at this is the very front of this horse. I could put a circle there, and that's about the right shape for what this horse looks like. right? It fills in that gap pretty well. It, it shows me where the shoulder is. The front of the horse is marked off by that. The right behind his forelegs marked off by the circle. Obviously, this part of the circle, this part, this part, those will have to get erased at some point if I'm actually going to draw the horse using these circles. But for right now, all I want to know is where are the outside boundaries of what I'm looking at. So in the back, I've got the same situation. It's a much smaller circle. See about, let's say about that big, and it'll actually give me the distance between the back and front of this rear leg. Now, when I make this into an actual circle and kind of try to smooth out the edges here with my eraser, I'm finding that the circle doesn't go all the way up to the, to the uh, top of the horse's backside. That's okay. That still gives us enough information to look at relationships. Because now what I can do is I can draw these two shapes. This circle is about that wide. And that's about the same distance between the small circle and the big circle. So however wide I make my little circle, that's how much distance I need to put between that circle and the big circle. That'll help me keep this horse in proportion. So once I've done that, all I have to do is draw in these lines that connect the circles and draw in the legs. And But that's still complicated, right? So what we would do beyond that is put in some more shapes. It looks to me like the shape between this circle and that circle is almost like a rectangle. And if I put a rectangle on its side, kind of tilted it a little bit, then I might have something really similar to this horse. Now you can see the back dips below that edge. The, the belly dips below that edge. That's perfect. That's fine. Because now I still have a relationship to something that's easier to draw, like this rectangle. Anyone can draw that rectangle. But I have a relationship now. I can look and see it dips that far below. So when I'm redrawing this later, that's not a whole lot more to remember. That's a lot easier for me to remember. So I'm going to continue to do the same thing, try to get as much of the horse blocked out in shapes as possible. So this part of the leg looks kind of like a triangle to me. So I'm just going to start with the circle and make that into a triangle. I won't even put a base on that. Uh, I'll just make that two lines that come out from the circle. So now I've got kind of an ice cream cone shape here. Same thing here, I'm going to put a triangle for this front leg, and then the bottoms of the legs look kind of like really thin rectangles. Then there are some triangle shapes right here, 
with these two legs that go together. There's a nice triangle right there, it looks like. The rectangles that go like that. There's a big triangle here. You see the point of that triangle goes beyond his head. There's a, a circle here. I see a circle at least. Another little circle there. And it's just connected at the rims by straight lines. Now, this is not a horse, right? I've just drawn a bunch of shapes. But if you take those shapes and remove them from the horse, you still have a roughly horse-shaped image. And you can see that when I move the tracing paper away from the actual drawing. I can't draw a horse just all those complex shapes originally, but I can draw these shapes. I can draw circles and rectangles and triangles, and I can draw them in relationship to each other. I know that this rectangle is going to overlap the circle by about this much, about a third of the way through the circle. I know it's the same thing over here, about a fourth of the way through the circle here. It's a smaller amount. Uh, I, can, I can tell the angle. It's not straight across. It's a little bit tilted down for the back, so I can keep that in line. Same thing for the triangle. The angles are really important here. It looks like the angle of this edge keeps on going straight down all the way to the four, to the four legs. So these are some things that are going to help me look for relationships. So now, as I go to draw this image, instead of drawing the horse, I'm just going to try to redraw these shapes. And so it'll, it'll go like this. I'm looking to draw first this little shape, because that's my, my point of reference. Circle about that big. And I said before, this circle is about its own width away from the big circle. So I'll do the same thing. Make that right there, and that's where the big circle starts. I've got a rectangle tilted on its side, and it kind of sticks up above, above my circle there. Goes down to the bottom of it right there, so I'm going to draw that. Gets about a third of the way in here. This triangle has that kind of angle to it, so I want to make sure I bring that angle down as well. This is not quite vertical, it's a little bit tilted, so I'm going to bring that down as well. I've got these little rectangles that are, let's see, they look almost a little bit shorter, it looks like, than the width of that circle, just a little shorter. So I'll make them that big. They're still tilted too, this is not straight up and down, they're tilted. That triangle, I'm going to draw real quick. The front legs have the same kind of tilt to them. That triangle is a, is a really thin triangle. As I'm drawing it, I want to make sure that I keep it thin. These are straight up and down, it looks like. It looks like those are just rock solid, straight up and down. And that tip of the triangle gets cut off by the rectangle. All I'm doing is just looking at relationships, these little shapes. How do they fit together? Where do they overlap? That kind of thing. This large triangle, same situation. I know that it's, let's see, here's the width of the circle, and yeah, that's about right. So from the edge of the circle to the top of the triangle, it's about the same. My circle's a little smaller, so the edge here, to the top of that triangle, I've got to bring it all the way up here. I know that it goes to the top of that shape right there where those two meet. Right there, little bitty circle. Let's say about about that big. Even smaller circle, my angle. Bring my angle down here. It's about like that. Now, at this point, I have drawn not a horse, but a series of shapes, and it's not identical, but I can see that it's pretty close. I can start to look for the differences. I don't think this angle is right. I think my triangle is too large up here. I need to move my head back a little bit. Uh, this back leg is too big. So I would start making those adjustments on the basic shapes before I ever try to turn this into a horse. And then obviously the next step is, is pretty easy. Uh, once you've got once you've got the horse shape done, you would start actually drawing 
the horse itself. Great. So now that I've got the shapes lined up, and, and let's just assume that I've done a pretty good job of getting these shapes together. I'm not going to make any adjustments for the sake of time on the video. But I can see that this back dips below that edge a little bit. So I'm going to start drawing in the actual horse shape. And I know that it stays above the circle a little bit, so I'm going to stay above the circle. And the tail starts there. This dips inside of the triangle. So I go inside the triangle a little bit. This comes outside and has a little bit of a roundness to it here. It has another roundness to it there. The legs start like that. The belly dips under in that way. So I'll start and I'll try to make that same shape, dipping under. You can see this shape right here, outside the rectangle, but up to the line of the belly. I'm just trying to make sure that that shape is correct on my drawing. And then I do the same thing with the front of the legs and the, the neck has to have a little uh, curve to it right here. And the neck back here actually has more of a curve. The ears stick up right about there, outside the front, like that. Mine are a little bit too tall because my, my triangle is coming up there, so I need to take those ears, make them a little bit shorter. But you can see how I'm doing this. Everything is all about those relationships, making sure that the relationship between your shapes is correct. Once you've got those shapes where they're supposed to be, you can start erasing the insides, erasing those guidelines that you've got until you're left with something that is a lot more like the original horse. Now, this is primarily done to get you a good head start on getting the same proportions as you copy over this image. So now I've done my shapes like I tried to do earlier. I can pull the image from behind and actually start trying to make sure that I'm drawing that horse now. So I'll, I'll look in and See this jawline, and I'll try to draw that jawline. You know, and, and so forth. And so, but at this point, you've got the shape generally correct. And that's, that's the whole point of this method.